Good day and welcome to Workplace TV. I'm Ricardo Granderson and today I'm very excited to have with me the founding principal and partner at the Lupo Law Firm, Miss Jennifer Lupo. Welcome Jennifer to Workplace TV. Thanks for having me. So that the viewers may get a sense as to who you are, could you give us a brief overview as to where you're from, where you went to college, where you went to law school, and why alternative dispute resolution, ADR in particular, and its use in the workplace was important to you. So thank you for having me today. Um, again, my name is Jennifer Lupo. I attended Bard College. I received a master's degree in political science from the State University of New York at Stony Brook and a law degree from Toro College. I have been in many roles over my career, uh, from in-house and general counsel to a, the managing partner of my own small law firm. And why ADR has become so integral in my view, and particularly in the employment realm, is because those are relationships that need to be continued. And if you have a situation inside of a business where you have either a manager and a subordinate or you have laterals to folks that are of the same level who are in dispute, that creates conflict within your entire organization. So I find that ADR, in particular mediation in workplace disputes, is very useful. Thank you, Jennifer. Can you talk briefly about the difference between litigation as opposed to alternative dispute resolution? Sure. Uh, there are many mechanisms for resolving a dispute, regardless of the type of dispute and where it comes from. So for example, most folks know about going to court, right? You're gonna get a lawyer and we're gonna go to battle and we're going to litigate. And what litigation does is it takes the ability to create a resolution that the parties can live with away from the parties and it vests that power in a judge and jury. Then there's mediation. Well, there's negotiation, mediation, and arbitration. Now, negotiation could be done inter-party. It could be done lawyer to lawyer. Um, and that is an, another mechanism to resolve a dispute without having to go to court. A third way is mediation. And in a mediation, a neutral third party is engaged to help these two sides have a structured conversation with one another to find the best resolution for the parties, given the facts and circumstances. And then lastly, we have arbitration. Arbitration is the hiring of one or more private judges who will make a determination based on the facts and evidence before them of the dispute. Thank you for that. I have a question. Let's say I really believe in the case or my position and I really want to litigate. Can you use your skills to persuade me based on what is the likely length of time that a litigation effort may last as opposed to a mediation? Sure. So what I like to say to folks when they're trying to weigh their options with respect to how to resolve a dispute, I do risk assessment. And part of the risk assessment includes how long the process, any given process, will take. So for example, the distinction between a litigation in court and a mediation outside of court is stark. In New York City alone, in the State Supreme Court in New York County, from the date of filing to the date of final resolution at trial, one can expect to wait any bet anywhere between three and five years to have their case heard by a judge and just, jury. Just a second. Did you say three and five years? Between three to five years. That's a long time, folks. Indeed it is. But what's interesting about that is this other statistic that folks don't know about, which is that 98.6% of cases settle before they hear they're heard by a judge or jury. Now, so how do, you, how, do you, what, how do you deal with that? So many cases work up, work up, work up, work up, and they get to the eve of trial, 
and then they settle. So now you've expended a, a, tr a tremendous amount of money and time preparing for a trial that doesn't happen and you ultimately settle. Right. So I explained to folks that this is one option and there's nothing wrong with litigation, but if you are in, particularly in the workplace setting, or you want to resolve a dispute in an expeditious manner, I oftentimes offer mediation as an alternative. And what mediation can do is that you, if you are organized, and you come to the table prepared, you can have a resolution within 45 days of your dispute. So, so if I'm hearing you, the litigation process is rather protracted and could be as long as five years, whereas with the mediation you're talking, it could be resolved within 40, 45 days, and I suspect someone with your expertise maybe within three or four days. When I mediate a dispute, I take, I look at the whole dispute and I look at the folks that are involved. And I really don't, you know, folks speak to the word, this is my position. Right. And what I often tell them is, let's put positions aside and let's talk about interests. What are your interests here in either pro continuing with this dispute and how do you see it resolving? Or how do you, s what do you need to get is it money? Is it an apology, et cetera? What interests are there to resolve this and that need to be met? And you have more opportunity with a mediator to speak about the issues that are important to you and the interests that are important to you than you ever will with a judge. Thank you for that. Can you talk briefly about how ADR in general and mediation in particular can help mitigate or reduce cost and time in an employment matter? Oh, absolutely. So oftentimes I will, um, I'll talk to HR managers or I'll talk to C-suite um, executives about the cost of litigation and how to manage the, you know, how, how do we manage these costs? And I say to them oftentimes, well, the first way to manage that cost is to take each claim seriously that comes through your HR department and to investigate it fully and then have a quick and efficient resolution to it by at least trying to mediate it in the first instance before you allow folks to get really entrenched in positions rather than looking at what their interests are in resolving the dispute. And when I say that, is, and, and how I explain it to the folks in-house, I say, look, you want to get your employee or your manager before they fall in love with their position. Because once they've fallen in love, it becomes very complicated to fall out of love. Thank you for that. Let's say for the sake of discussion, I am a Fortune 500 employer and one of our employees, employee X, has filed a charge with the EEOC and the EEOC has required my company to now attend a mediation. Can you provide one piece of advice or suggestion for employers who may have to attend a mediation? Just one. The one piece of advice that I would have is to take it extremely seriously. Do not take any charge as being frivolous. What you don't know is tremendous. And that is oftentimes where employers get tripped up is because they believe that they know the facts and circumstances based upon what their perhaps C-level or below executive is telling them. But employees, and like any other person, have their own perspective of what occurred and oftentimes are fearful that they're gonna lose their position in the company, so perhaps they're not as forthcoming. So to prepare to investigate and to take it seriously. Thank you, those answers have been thorough and insightful. I wanna digress just a bit with regard to recruitment in the ADR and mediation space. You are a Lat Latina professional, and my question is, what kind of advice or suggestions may you have for a Latina or a Latino male in law school right now, or maybe in, the, in an undergraduate institution, thinking about 
going to law school, but not necessarily interested in being a litigator, but interested in the ADR space. What kind of advice or suggestion might you be able to give to someone who's interested in following in your footsteps in ADR? Sure. So um, years back, when I attended law school, there was one class called Alternative Dispute Resolution. In the last 25 years, ADR has become very, very commonplace. So a lot of academic institutions, either on the undergraduate or in business schools or in law schools, have whole components that you can take. So ADR clinics, um, components of classes on risk assessment and dispute resolution. I highly recommend that folks prepare themselves for all of the options uh, that they could come to see in their careers as attorneys because you don't know where your career is going to take you. You may start out as a litigator and ultimately become a transactional lawyer. If you're a transactional lawyer, you'll be drafting. If you're drafting, you'll be the first line to prevent disputes because you'll be crafting those dispute resolution clauses. So knowing how they work and knowing all of the different types of dispute resolution functions that are available to clients is key. And take the clinics, take the courses, because it's not going to go away, ADR. It's only growing. And can you talk briefly about the significance or importance of having a mentor versus a sponsor? Sure. Um, um, that's, a, that's a great question, Ricardo. Um, Oftentimes, folks are confused between mentorship and sponsorship, right? So mentors are folks who are, are there to help you, regardless of whether it's a career mentor or a personal mentor, to help you advance and grow as a person. A sponsor is someone who has an opportunity to help you advance in your career or your vocation. And that's the distinction here. And your sponsor is someone that you check in with every now and again. You let them know what your achievements have been. You let them know the different things that you're learning. And then you have to remember the greatest thing, which is you have to give to get. So it can't always be that you are reaching out for help. There, this is a bilateral relationship. The best relationships that I have as a mentor and as a sponsor have been with folks who have gotten to know me a bit and all of a sudden in my inbox I'll find an article right. that is germane to either my practice area or something that I'm interested in. So that's this person saying, I hear you, I understand what you're interested in, I've taken an interest in you and I hope that you too do the same with me. And that makes me feel more confident about the person as a whole not just in the function that they're asking me to advance them in. I, I, what I'm hearing you say, and I can really appreciate it and it resonates, is that you've got to give to get. Absolutely. You can't expect the sponsor and or mentor to simply be unilaterally looking out for you, that it's a bilateral relationship. But I want to thank you, Jennifer. Thank you for spending time with us here at Workplace TV. And have you written any books or do you have any publications? Are you going to be on any panels? Sure. Um, I will be um, in June. I will be speaking on the Jay-Z effect in arbitration. And that will be for the Association of Conflict Resolution for Greater New York, their annual meeting. I um, also have another panel coming up for the New York State Bar Association on the use of mentors and sponsors in um, growing your ADR career. And um, I have an article that I am in the midst of drafting right now on workplace mediation. And can you share the number of Lupo Law for our viewers? Sure, our telephone number is 917-580-6988. I can be reached at jlupo at lupolaw.com or you can find me as Jennifer Lupo on LinkedIn. Well, thank you very much, Jennifer. And thank you, the viewers, for watching Workplace TV, the first stop towards finding solutions to workplace challenges for employers and employees. I'm Ricardo Granderson. Be well and be successful.